All right, guys, now season three of chapter two, we can expect FNCS solos and trio cash cups, right? Knowing what to build and when, this is going to be vital in this season, right? What's going on, guys? This is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen here coming at you once again with a brand new video. I'm so excited about this, guys. So today's video is going to be one that's gonna help each and every one of you guys improve in Fortnite, as it is the fundamentals that really makes the pro player great, right? So we're gonna be going over some tips, you know, to really help you guys improve your game sense. So important, man. Game sense is everything in Fortnite. We're gonna discuss awareness, Oof. decision making, and we're also going to analyze some season three content, you know, from your favorite pro players. But this isn't going to be your average game sense guy. No, 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 no. We're gonna break down game sense in its entirety, all right? So, what is game sense? Briefly put, it's the ability to break apart certain scenarios and make the best possible choice available to you. You know, most of the time when you check your replay, you're gonna notice that you have the option of making a better decision which would have ensured a better outcome. So, that's what we're gonna talk about today. All right, guys, it's about that time. Ladies and gentlemen around the world, it's time to scream this out. Come on, it's time to sit back. Come on, Bunch of Crunch Army, relax, and get some of my favorite candy. What is that, y'all? It's that Bunch of Crunch. Oh, stay still. Let's get this going. All right, guys, jumping straight into our first topic today is going to be a big one. All right, it's awareness. Now, the thing about awareness is it's such a broad and overused topic, right? But very few actually internalize the meaning of it and really use it properly. Let me put it this way, all right? If you are noticing every single detail from audio cues, footsteps, weird sounds, noises, or gunshots, then you probably are missing a lot of crucial information that uh, you really could have took advantage of. Okay, so Fortnite, as we all know, is a game where even a mere half a second can be the cause of you living or dying. And that's why being completely aware of everything is an absolute must in this game. Firstly, I want to talk about information gathering when landing. So important, man. What this means is knowing and understanding areas in Fortnite. More specifically, the context of the, of the areas. Now, let's be real. It's easy to know if a player has contested your landing spot because you're going to see things such as broken buildings, looted chests. So we're not going to be wasting your time speaking about that stuff, all right? Because that's really obvious. What we want to point out is the small details. This could be gun spawns, for example. When you're gliding in Fortnite, that's the perfect time to gain information and just really scout the area. When you're scouting, you want to be looking out for the following. Where players are landing, gun spawns, and chest spawns. Now, at first, this doesn't really seem like much. I get it. However, it's going to have a direct effect on you either returning back to the lobby or walking out of there. So why these three things in particular? Okay, well, the first thing is that you want to know where the other players are landing because you know if they're going to be a direct threat or not. Based on the loop path that they take, you can estimate how and when they're going to reach a certain area in your drop spot. Secondly, knowing the gun and chest spawns will be a clear indicator if someone has been in the area or not. Okay, so if you saw a shotgun while gliding in at a particular loot spot and it's gone, well, you know somebody's been there, right? But one of the most clear indicators is buildings. Most players in an effort to loot quickly, right, will, will take shortcuts using ramps and if you see a particular area that looks suspicious, always be on guard and just be ready for a fight. Sound awareness is something slightly different. These are audio cues that you need to be listening out for to help you make the right decision. We have a perfect clip here, and I mean like right here from my man, Benji Fishy. Let's play that back and figure out how Benji was able to win the fight. So we can see Benji trying to get in his opponent's box. He gets in, but may have bitten off more than he can shoot right now. In a split second, man, his opponent edits out of the box, leaving Benji stuck with no building pieces to edit. So he turns around to try and break out. While he does, he hears his opponent edit back inside. He turns around before the opponent gets the drop on him and he secures the kill. Now, how exactly did he exploit that opportunity? It's because he heard the edit noise. This is why, my friends, like, it's so important to pay attention to every detail. You have to be super careful when trying to get in your opponent's box. Even though traps were removed, players are just getting better and better at this, and really, this could have ended in a lot worse way for Benji. However, he heard the audio cue that his opponent was editing back into the box, which allowed him to survive the altercation. Great. 
Okay, so if you're still struggling with things like landings, box fights, and more, okay, you gotta check out ProGuys.com. There is a service on there called Play With Pros. You can choose from their selection of pro players and find your new coach who's gonna help you out doing one-on-ones to vibe reviews to help pinpoint the things that you need to improve on. Link is in the description. All right, guys, now season three of chapter two, we can expect FNCS solos and trio cash cups, right? Trios is going to be new for a lot of people. These competitive lobbies are going to be a lot harder as it is now trios, right? So expect more players in the late game, more materials being used and more bullets targeting you. Knowing what to build and when, oh my goodness, is going to be vital in this season, all right? Let's break this down and let's just talk about it because we really want you guys making the right decisions and winning games. Who wants to win more games? Yeah, I know, me too. Okay, so as we mentioned, you're gonna be in a trio, right? If all three of you have max materials, then that's 450 builds. Firstly, we recommend not being shy with your building and just knowing what material to use when it's going to be really, really crucial to your success. Okay, so take this clip from Savid, an EU pro player, all right. As you can see, a pad is placed, right? It's set up to be a short pad. They land at the edge of the zone. This is a very risky play as they could really get lobby focused. But, you know, as soon as they land, they build out of metal now. Metal is the strongest material, so already you know that they're setting up shop here. If they did build out of a different material like wood, whew, they would've got a lot of focus on purely because of that. You know, it's really the little things, guys, that really make all the difference in the game. Okay, so we're not done analyzing this clip they don't just build one by one no 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 the first player who launch pads as soon as he hits the ground he starts building a base for his teammates so they don't have to this means the base is built quicker and he builds it big enough so they don't become a target now that they did use a launch pad to rotate this zone let's talk about rotating specifically and really how to do it right Rotating in Fortnite is constantly evolving. That has new meta changes to different unique ways to tunnel now. Like, I wanna go over some things to keep an eye out for when rotating, which is going to help you guys improve your decision-making and game sense. Firstly, all right, you need to use your launch pad on the first moving zone. Write that down or watch it again, whatever. I keep seeing people do the mistake of just keeping their pad and just using it too late or just dying before they even get a chance to. How frustrating is that? You got a great loadout and you don't even have a chance to use it. That's the worst feeling in the world. The first moving zone is the furthest and it's really gonna burn the most mats. So this is the best time to use a pad, all right? You can use the pad either when the zone starts to move or when it's about to hit you. Your goal is to land as close to the safe zone as possible to use as little material as you can until you're safe. Unfortunately, you know, you may not be blessed with a launch pad every game. I understand, trust me. So this would mean you either have to wait for one to be placed by players around you, or you just need to rotate on foot. This, guys, is what will separate the pros from the casuals, and it's really gonna test your game sense. If you're boxed up and you're waiting for a pad, you need to do a number of things, all right? First, gain information on the players around you. Peek from a cone to stay safe and just look at your surroundings. Ensuring that you're also focused on the sounds around you. You know, if you can listen out for mythic weapons, such as the drum gun, you know there's a good chance that a player has a launch pad from the vault. If you don't want to pull out all your money up to chance, then rotating on foot may be your only option, all right? If this is the case, then plan ahead before leaving your box. If you haven't gained any information, then you're just running into a death trap. Again, peek safely from a cone, scout the area around you to find out how many players are around you, have they started moving yet, who are the threats, and are there any old bills you can just recycle to minimize the amount you have to use. These are all things that you need to be on the lookout for before you start your rotation. And while you're at it, have some bunch of crunch with that. You know what I mean? That'll probably help your game sense even more too. Okay. <laughs> An impact frag, for those of you who don't know, is a kill which grants you something that you need such as HP or materials. Now, some of you guys know when you go for an impact frag, some of you really, really don't. The issue is most people hesitate too long before going for an impact frag. This can cause you to run out of materials before you want to or just end up dying before you get heals. So if you're out of mats, then this is just a lot harder as opposed if you had some. 200 materials is really the golden number we would suggest you know you look for a kill on as it's not a lot of materials but it is enough to where it's going to help you achieve a kill now as we mentioned it may be you need health not materials in that case you need to be super careful 
Taking 50 50 fights when low on HP, oh my goodness. Yeah, that could be a really just horrible thing to do. But you cannot let your HP affect your confidence, though. That's a whole nother thing. Now, we don't mean, you know, rushing to people's boxes like Benji Fishy, but what we do mean is that you cannot seem unconfident. If you are looking to take a fight, you need to be getting early tags, taking walls, and going for some safe peaks. Don't push your luck and just jump inside someone's box, taking a wall, and going for peak shots like a peanut butter edit or a window shot is a whole lot safer. So if you're looking to become a pro player, one thing that you need to work on is your timing. This is a massively overlooked subject in Fortnite, but it is something every pro works on. Timing is everything, man, from you landing, looting, collecting materials, and rotating. The reason it is something a lot of pro players really work on is because in a game which is fully RNG based, if you can control an aspect, you wanna control the aspect the best you can, right? They will have certain drop spots each game. They know how much time they have to loot, collect mats, and rotate before they can just look for an engagement or just storm search tags. This is to maximize efficiently and really ensure that nothing is left to chance. Knowing an area's chest and weapon spawns is so important, but knowing where the best place to gather the material is, where you know, players land and where those players rotate is awesomely so important. To do this, you could just really play your games out and just take mental notes of when and where you meet players, but that would just mean putting it up to chance. So the way we recommend doing this is going into replay and analyzing players' landing spots and movements, all right? If you do this for, let's Let's just say you do it for like three to five games you're gonna have a good understanding of other players loot paths and where you need to go to get an engagement or avoid players depending on what your goals are or what your loadout is so using the time is really going to be important as it's really something that you need to start considering for your own games now this does depend on your landing spot so it's not a one size fits all thing i get it you need to think of how much time you have for looting material collecting and then how much time you need for rotating the reason i say this is really for your specific landing spot is because someone like me who likes a drop spot around the edges of the map i would need more time for rotating so my loot and material gathering would be just a little quicker comparing this to someone whose drop spot is more central they would have to compromise as much time for the rotations meaning they could just loot and collect mats at a slower pace so if you're struggling with your drop spots guys check out our latest landing spot video a lot of you guys were getting an error message so we did have to re-upload this so be sure to check it out all right all right guys so before we end this video i want to make sure that you've devoured all the information i've just thrown at you so we got to do a recap who's ready for that come on now you better be hyped let's go awareness that was a broad topic but the key points to take away are gain as much information as you can when landing keep a listen for audio cues and remain focused at all times capitalizing on any situation that comes all right your competitive lobbies are going to have more players, more builds, and more bullets. Harder materials will help avoid getting full sprayed, and don't be shy with your builds, all right, as they are going to be more overall mats available in your group. So if you had a pad at your disposal, then we recommend using it on the first moving zone. If you don't, try to recycle old builds and avoid burning through your own. Impact frags are so important to really make sure that you don't leave it too late to look for them. Around 200 materials is an ideal amount, all right? You also need to consider your timing in your own landing spot from the time it takes you to loot the area and collect materials to how far you have to rotate. Ensuring you have a time schedule in mind that's gonna maximize your efficiency. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, the one who is your number one fan, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Make sure to connect with me on my Insta at your motivation guy. Never give up, man. Never give up on your dreams. No matter who's talking to you, no matter who's putting doubt into you, man. If you don't believe it for yourself, who's going to believe for you? That seems to be the end of the video, my friends. Thank you very much for watching the whole way through. I really respect you, man. Thank you so much. If you have enjoyed this video, please slap a like on it, all right? Comment any ideas you might want us to cover in our next video and subscribe so you don't miss another upload. Love you guys. Bunch of Crunch Army. I'm signing off. Peace.